In this tutorial, we will solve nonlinear systems using a graphing method. So let's flip over to example two. We're solving systems by graphing. Our solution or solutions will be where two graphs intersect. That's ultimately what we're looking for when we're looking for a solution to a system by graphing. So I have five cases to look at. In this first case, I've graphed two parabolas, and I would like to know where their solution is. Well, clearly these two parabolas are never going to intersect. So this is the null set. There are no solutions to this system. If I look over at the second one, I have a parabola, it's graphed, and I also have a line. And where they're intersecting is this one spot right here. We could actually use the, the word tangent because this line is tangent to our parabola. And there is one solution. Looking at our middle case, I have a parabola and I've graphed a line. This time our line intersects our parabola in two locations. So therefore there would be two solutions. What if we have a circle and a parabola? How could those intersect? Well in this case it looks like we've got one solution here, one solution here, and another solution right here. Again, it's tangent. This parabola is tangent to the inside of this circle. Three solutions. And finally, our last one, we have a circle and we have a parabola. And this time, the parabola is intersecting in four different spots. So we have four solutions. So today, when we're graphing, or when we're solving algebraically, there might be no solutions, but there might be all the way up to four solutions. So we're on the lookout for as many solutions as we can find. So now let's graph our own systems. I'll look at example three. I'm going to graph two uh, equations. The first one I'm just going to do in red. I'm going to color code. This first equation is the equation of a parabola. It is quadratic because I see the little x squared. This quadratic is in standard form. If you do not remember how to graph a quadratic from standard form, I suggest that you go back to that tutorial and review that. Standard form, to find the vertex, we're going to do the opposite of b divided by 2a. So the opposite of b would be a negative 2. 2 times a, a is a 1, so 2 times that, of course, is 2. So negative 1 is what I get. That means that the vertex of this parabola is going to have an x-coordinate of negative 1. Now I just need to go and find the y-coordinate. Once I know what x is, I can plug that into our equation to find what y is. So this is negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 1. So negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus negative 2 would give me negative 1. Minus 1 would now give me negative 2. So I have my vertex for this parabola. I'm going to go to negative 1, negative 2, and remember I like to put a little star at my starting point. The value of a is 1, and that will help me to find all of our other values. That's our normal output. So for a parabola, when I input a 1, I output a 1. So go to the right 1 and up 1. Back to the star, I'm going to input a 2 and go up 4, because 2 squared. 1, 2, 3, 4. Back to the star. Input a 3, 1, 2, 3. Output 3 squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's probably all I'm going to fit over there. I'm going to do symmetry on the left side. So negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 3, 9. So there's my parabola. Again, if you forget how to graph from standard form, we have a tutorial for that. Go back and watch that to remind yourself. So that's our first graph. The second graph I'm going to graph in blue. This is just a graph of a line. I don't see any squared terms. So this is just a line. I'm going to solve for y to put it into y equals mx plus b form. So I'll add, I'll, I will add x to both sides. I will have y equals x and 1 are not the same or like terms. So I'll just write them side by side, x plus 1. And now I can find my y-intercept, which is positive 1. So I'll go to the y-axis, 
and put a 1. And my slope is 1 over 1. So from here, I'm going to go up 1 and right 1. Hey, look at that. There's one of our solutions. Up 1 and right 1, up 1 and right 1, up 1 and right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. And I'm going to come over here and do some down and left, down and left. Hey, look at that. There's another solution. Down and left, down and left, down and left. I'm going to graph as many points as possible. The more points you have, the easier it is to draw a nice straight line, unless you would like to use a ruler. So I've graphed both equations, and now I'm looking for the solution to this system. The solution is where they intersect. Here's one of the solutions, and here's the other solution. All I need to do is name those ordered pairs, and I will be finished. My solutions are, I'll start on the left side, this is negative 2, negative 1. That's one of our ordered pairs. And this one is positive 1, positive 2. So we have two solutions to this system, and we found them. Let's look at example 4. I'm going to color code again. The first one I'll do in red. This is also a quadratic equation. I know that because if I foiled, I would have an x squared. So this is quadratic. This is actually an intercept form. If you do not remember how to graph from intercept form, I suggest that you go and watch that tutorial to remind yourself. Intercept form will give us the two x-intercepts. The two x-intercepts in this case, from this factor, we have a negative 2. And from this factor, we have a negative 6. So I know that the x-axis is going to be hit at the negative 2 and at the negative 6. So that's where this graph will cross the x-axis. Now I know that the vertex is going to be exactly in the middle, which will be somewhere right here at 1, 2, 3, negative 4. That's where our axis of symmetry would be when x is negative 4. So I know my vertex is going to have an x-coordinate of negative 4. I just need to find my y-coordinate. So I could plug a negative 4 into our function. So negative 4 plus 2 and negative 4 plus 6 and multiply all this together. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and negative 4 plus 6 is positive 2. That gives me a negative 4. So my y must be negative 4. So my vertex is negative 4, negative 4. So negative 4 to the left, and negative 4 down. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll put a little starting point right there. And let's check my a. My a is still a 1. That's nice. That's my normal outputs. So from my star, I'm going to go over 1 and up 1, and over 2 and up 4. And that's a nice way to check myself, because that's correct. And one more, over 3 and up 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right. Let's do symmetry on the left side. Negative 1, up 1. Negative 2, up 4. Negative 3, up 9. And we'll do a nice, smooth parabola. So that's our first equation. Let's graph our second equation. I'll do this one in blue. This, again, is also a quadratic because I see the little x squared. This time, we are in vertex form. If you do not remember how to graph from vertex form, I suggest you watch that tutorial. There were three ways that we learned how to graph a quadratic. Vertex form, intercept form, and standard form. So this is a nice review of all three of those. Vertex form is pretty simple to find the vertex. The vertex comes from h and k. h is a negative 4, and k is a negative 4 the easiest way to find the vertex from vertex form. So 1, 2, 3, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Oh, that's weird. They have the same starting point. So that must be one of the solutions, because obviously they're intersecting right here. Let's check our a. Our a is a value of 1. That's our normal output. So that means from our star, when I go right 1, I go up 1. Hey, look at that. I'm on the same parabola. When I go right 2, I should go up 4. Huh, same thing. When I go over 3, I should go up 9. When I go left 1, I go up 1. Left 2, up 4. Look at this. This is, oh, this is the same exact parabola. Every single dot that I had on that red curve is now on our blue curve. Well, that is very interesting. If I'm looking for the intersections, they intersect everywhere. Every single point where they touch, they touch. So what am I going to say for our solutions? I'm going to use the word infinite. 
this system has infinite solutions. In fact, these equations are identical. They might be in two different forms, one's in intercept form, the other one's in vertex form, but they actually are the same exact parabola. So we have infinite solutions because we graphed the same thing. As opposed to over here, we clearly only have two solutions because they only touch in two spots. So there are only two solutions here. Okay, so that was a good graph of graphing our, excuse me, a good review of graphing our parabolas. Let's look at one last example in our graphing tutorial. Here's a picture that's already been graphed for you. It says determine the solutions or solution or solutions to the system graphed below. It doesn't say how many, it says find them, determine what they are. Well, this is clearly a circle and a line, and they intersect here and they intersect here. All we're looking for are the ordered pairs. There are two solutions to the system, so let's find them. This ordered pair, let's find 0, 0, 1, 2, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. So negative 3, negative 4 is one of the solutions. The other solution is up here. Let's count that out. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 3, 5. So that's not too bad. I like when they give us the picture. We don't have to graph it ourselves. All we have to do is identify the ordered pairs. Solving by graphing means you graph the system and find where they intersect and name the ordered pairs. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and we'll practice our graphing in class. See ya.